Zoe! <laughs> Thanks, Cloudy! And welcome everyone to Cloudy Storytime! I'm Zoe, your host for today. Say, that candy looks delicious. Could I try some? <laughs> I don't think you'd like it. It's not very good. Yum, yum, yum! Well, if you're not gonna share, maybe we should get into our story for today. A story? Yeah, let's do it! Let's get one from the Skybrary. Skybrary. Here I go! Come on, here you go! Wow, this one's perfect! Ready to go? Cloudy, ready to go? Oh, right! On my way! Whee! <laughs> Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a girl named Lily. She had the most beautiful golden hair. Because of this, everyone called her Goldilocks. But even more than her hair was golden, her mind was curious. She was always interested in learning new things or relearning things she'd already learned, but was certain she'd soon forget. Lily lived with her mother, father, and three older sisters in a riverside cottage at the edge of the woods. Every morning, the four girls would walk to the tree line, never going past the first big oak tree. Here, along the banks of the river, they would pick berries for their family supper. The tastiest berries were found in the bushes by the river. Mmm, the fish in the river are looking pretty tasty too. Cloudy, leave the fish alone. Goldilocks and her sisters would also roll up their trousers and wade into the river, catching frogs and giving them silly names like Forksin or Fug. They would also tell tales of the woods and the things they've heard beyond the big oak tree. When the sisters would talk, Goldilocks would sit and listen, her eyes as wide as big wide eyes. She'd listen and imagine what it would be like to see the things they spoke about. They told tales of a hunter who never missed a shot and a waterfall that flowed the wrong way. But most of all, the sisters told tales of bears. I heard they're greedy and never share. I heard they're mean and rude. I heard they only wear neckties and fancy hats. The more the sisters talked about these bears, the more curious Goldilocks grew. Until one night, she grew so curious, she found she couldn't sleep. She tossed and turned in her bed, images of neckties dancing in her head. And so, she crept out the door and down to the riverbank. She hopped over the water, walking confidently towards the woods and right past the big oak tree. She stopped and looked back. She'd never seen the oak tree from this side before. It didn't look so different, still just a tree. And then she turns back and goes home, right? The story has just started, Cloudy. Don't be scared. <coughs> Who said anything about scared? Oh, like a scaredy cat. Right. What a cliche. I'm not scared. Let's keep going. Goldilocks walked deeper into the dense, dark forest. She saw many new things she'd never seen before, like a mushroom so small it could hardly be seen, and a bird so blue it seemed hard to believe. But these things weren't why she had come to the forest. She wanted to see a bear. Just as the night reached its middle, and the only light came from the stars between the high branches, Goldilocks arrived at a clearing with a big stone cottage. No lights on inside. No smoke from the chimney. No one was home. Goldilocks slowly approached, and as she drew closer, she noticed that the front door was huge. The voices of her sisters echoed in her head. I heard bear cottages have the biggest doors. Goldilocks gulped. <laughs> Not a burp, a gulp. Me, I thought you said burp. Sorry. This was a bear cottage. Goldilocks pushed open the door and walked inside. 
inside looked like a regular cottage. But she was on her guard. After all, she had heard how mean and unpredictable bears can be. She walked over to the kitchen table and found three bowls laid out in a row. Each one was filled with porridge. Goldilocks was so hungry from her long walk, she eyed the bowls suspiciously. Why shouldn't she have some of the porridge? The bears would never share it. And so, she took a spoonful from the first bowl. She eats the scoop. Yuck. No thanks. She eats the porridge. Can we add some honey or something? There's some. Perfect. Thank you. And so, Goldilocks added some honey to the porridge and ate a spoonful of the first one. But she found the porridge was too hot. She took a spoonful from the second bowl. The porridge was too cold. She took a spoonful from the third bowl. It was just right. So she took another spoonful and another until the bowl was empty and Goldilocks was full. She wandered into the living room and found a beautiful wooden hat rack, all racked with hats. Why shouldn't she try them on? The bears would never offer. And so she tried on the first one a top hat with a purple ribbon, but she could barely get it on her head. It was too small. She tried on the second, a straw hat with a wide brim. Whoops, it slipped down right over her eyes. It was too big. Then she tried on the third hat, a cute little sailor cap. It fit just right. She admired herself in the mirror. A bear couldn't pull this off like she could. So with her perfect new hat, Goldilocks decided to explore upstairs. There she found three beds, and she was feeling pretty sleepy. She had never stayed up this late before. What's the harm in a little nap? She said aloud to no one. So she tried the first bed, but when she lay down her head, she sat up with a jolt. The pillow was a rock. Ouch, way too firm. Then she tried the second bed, and this time her head sank deep into the pillow. So deep, it was a struggle to get up. The pillow was a pile of wet sand. Too soft. Then she tried the third bed, and it was just right, with a pillow so perfectly regular. The moment she'd settled in and her eyes were about to close, she heard the door opening. She sprang from the bed and rushed down the stairs. <gasps> There, standing in the doorway, were three bears. Their colorful neckties swaying in the nighttime breeze. Uh-oh! It was a mama bear, a papa bear, and a baby bear. Oh, look, a weary traveler, said the mama bear, not sounding mean or rude in the slightest. You must be hungry and tired, said the papa bear in a kind and warm voice. Have some of my porridge said the baby bear. I love your hat. I have one just like it, said the papa bear. You can sleep on my pillow of sand, said the mama bear. Goldilocks suddenly felt so embarrassed. Wait, she cried. All the bears stopped and looked at her. I'm so sorry. I've eaten your porridge. I've already tried on your fancy hat, and I've already laid down in your beds. I was told that bears don't share. I was told they were mean and rude. But now that I've met you, I see that's not true. It's okay, little one, said the big papa bear. Now you know, bears are not mean. Bears love to share. So Goldilocks took their kind offer and slept through the night. And the next day, she told the bear family to follow her. They walked through the woods in the warm morning light. She brought them past the old oak tree, right to where her sisters knelt on the shores of the river. The girls all looked up in surprise. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Their sister Goldilocks was standing there with three bears. Goldilocks calmly walked over and grabbed a basket of berries. She brought it back to the bears. Here you go. They're the sweetest, most delicious berries. Perfect for porridge. The bears all said thank you and went back into the woods. Goldilocks sat down and began looking for frogs when she noticed her sisters all staring at her, their mouths hanging open. What? she asked. The bears taught me it's important to share. You share to show you care.
the end. <sighs> so, what did you think, Cloudy? I loved it! I guess sharing really is important. I'm sorry I didn't share my candy earlier. That's okay. But I did grab you this before the book closed. Oh, thanks, Cloudy. You're so sweet. Today, I've learned you share to show you care. Time to add that one to my lesson log. You share to show you care. Done. I like that. You share to show you care. Thanks for watching Cloudy Storytime, everyone. See you next time. Thank you.